Hello everyone, welcome back to Celasta, Crown of the Magister, and my rematch with the fight that bested me during my previous Iron Man Cataclysm run. Now, the very first thing I want to do before we carry on is put this potion into Gothic's utility pouch so that we all have extra healing available to us. The next thing I'm going to do is come over to Beryl and have her cast... I can't see how many second level spell slots she has. I'm guessing it must be at least two. So we have Healing Word, but we have Cure Wounds as well, and Kite is currently down 12 HP. So let's go with a second level Cure Wounds for Kite. That gets him the 12 healing he needs to be up at the top. Then Faith could probably do with one of those as well. Okay, we've lost... That was the only second level spell slot she had. That's fine. It went to good use. Faith, you're going to get a first level cure wounds. That's just about as good as we can hope for. So that is... The six of us in good health. I don't know if Delat has any capacity for dark vision. I suppose we could see if we select them. The relative dimness in this space is the same for all of us. I can't remember if it would get darker if we didn't have dark vision. But for now we're just going to keep creeping gently through, collecting the few things that we can find around here. We get some lovely goblin hair fungus. That'll make some delicious soup later, I'm sure. Down there is what scares me most, because that's the encounter that killed us previously. But over here, there are supplies across there that I want. Mm hmm. This one didn't die yesterday. What's this outfit? Timarian. Who wants to open this? You never know, there might be a fortune in there. Yeah, Faith's good like that. But let's send Kite over, because he's got lots of inventory weight we can use for a while. Push that down. And see what we've got going on. A scroll of mage armor. Not really one useful for us. Magnificent leather armor. And a Tamarian journal. Right, let's bring that back because Faith is currently wearing standard armor, I believe. And if we do the traditional identify on what we just found. Even though we all know what it is. We might as well make it official for them. Plus one leather armor. So, Kite, if you would be so kind as to pass that off to Faith. You can see currently her armor class is 16. However, if we change over to the leather armor plus one, that goes up to 17. And we get this wonderful red getup. All right, let's collect the party. Get everyone back into cautious. And then gently, one tile at a time, move across here. Wait, are those Sorax? Who else? Right out of a fairy tale as ugly as life. And certainly not lizard folk. We can surprise them. Can't we sneak around? From what I see, not a chance. All right, tread lightly. And we all attack at once. Now, last time, I believe I tried to push this off 
onto one of them in order to try and obtain sneak attack. And it did not work. So. I'm wondering if from up here it might be easier to choke them into this gap here. Now the only problem we have with that is that there are no torches up in this area. There's one there. There's one further down. There's stalactites because they hang tightly to the ceiling. And there's two on either side of this bridge and that guy there. Now I don't suppose we could sparkle this without setting things off. If this sets off the initiative, I guess it's worth being more lit during initiative. Alright, that went well. I am happy about this development. Let's see if we can do that one there. Too far away, it looks like. I don't want the unknown creature, I want the torch. Alright, Gothic, we're going for a tiny little independent walk. Because honestly, they're not going to be looking this far up, are they? Alright, that's as close as we can get without going down a level. And it's not enough. I wager we can get this one from up here. That's not going to be a problem. Let's do it from slightly further back where possible. Interestingly, casting that spell doesn't even bring us out of cautious. Sometimes spellcasting will bring you out of cautious by definition of having just cast a spell at all. And I'm going to guess we can't see this one through the rickety bridge. No. Alright, well we've got more light than we had last time and that's a great start. Now we have to decide who we attack first and hope that we can get some sneak attack for it. Gothic has one AoE spell left, and if it could be one that launches things off of part of this cliff, then our foes not only will have to re-climb up again, but also will suffer fall damage on the way around, quite likely. The only disadvantage we've given ourselves in lighting these torches is that Faith is going to have a harder time hiding in some of these corners for sneak attack. I think that guy stood there right now. Well, that's awkward, but fine better that than starting a fight where they weren't injured. You can go after that one instead. Can't see it, I suppose. Or it's one that can't even be felled, perhaps? There they are. Can we refill on arrows before this fight, please? I know that's probably not likely to have a combat where we have to fire 17 times. But preparation, 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 I suppose. The other question is, do we want everyone more dispersed than this? But I don't think so. Just 
just going to put Kite in the centre of all this, just so that he's adjacent to everybody. So that in the event of... Um, uh, words escape me. In the event of an attack, we would be able to induce disadvantage. Interesting. I'm hoping that it doesn't heal itself now, because if it does, I'll be mad. But if those injuries are sustained without starting initiative, I'm totally fine with that. Okay. Now, do we want to go after one of the injured ones to try and kill them sooner? Is there one more stalactite hiding there? Am I going mad? It's that one there. One of them keeps walking over that far, don't they? Apparently they're not stopping in that gap, though. I'm going to squeeze out every part of advantage I can get in this fight, so I will wait to see if I can get somebody to move under there. It's not going to be the red one, is it? Someone else will do it. And when they do, we'll be ready. They'll probably just think it's Mother Nature failing them. Damn. Alright, that's on me. Now we're going to have to start shooting something. Let's wait for them... One of these red guys to move out to the right slightly. One of the ones that's already injured. And then we'll take our shot. We could bless now, but bless only lasts a minute. And I know I will be more likely to waste a few of those precious turns not utilizing the first 6 12 seconds or so waiting to get our first action in and are these guys ever going to stand where I want them to this guy's up on the walls he's having a great time in life he's got a real patrol going I don't think I've ever seen them go around that loop before. But the time is now. Okay, they are surprised. That was our action. We are still hidden. Bring Faith back to the rest of the party. Fight. We're just going to keep attacking that one saboteur until they die or another more important threat presents itself. We're going to have advantage on this because we're an unseen attacker. It was terrible and Kite's hidden status is lost to him. Gothic. J 
just cantrips for now. We're going to use either a Burning Hands or a Thunder Wave in a moment, I'm sure. Hit for two damage. They are surprised. Pastel is up. We will take this opportunity to cast Bless again. And that's going to be on Faith, Kite, and Gothic. We are not going to unhide. We cannot see any of the other things to light from our current location. Right, here's Delat's full setup here. We have two attacks. Disengage, dodge, ready, shove, dash, unhide. So let's step up to here on the chance that they'll climb up this space and ready a melee attack. They're surprised, they're surprised. Beryl at the end can also bless. Faith is blessed, Kite is blessed, Gothic is blessed. So we can do Pastel, Delat, and Beryl. So now we are all blessed. And for now, I'm going to bring Beryl behind here. Just because they are a key character and they also have healing spells for the rest of the party. This guy's surprised. We are back to the top of the order. Unfortunately, these guys are in the way of Faith's best shot against the currently injured one, but so be it. We'll step up to where we need to. Can we not see this guy from here? It's got to be here. I don't love it, but we're taking the shot. We remain hidden, which is incredible. I suppose that 20 plus 7... Oh no, that does not get... Uh, stealth ability check. Apparently does not get a benefit from... Bless? That's fine, we don't need it right now. Good shot. We might have this guy. And hey, if we can take out one of their number, that's one fewer of them in the orbit that we have to deal with. And Gothic will step back. We're not seen because they died, so they don't get a perception check. And this guy's basically going to come after Kite, because Kite is the only visible one in the team at the moment. Now, Pastel's up with her first real turn after buffing previously. We do not have any first level spell slots left, and we're concentrating on Bless. But what we do have, if we can get line of sight on somebody, which from here we cannot. So for right now, we're not going to worry about it. Oh, we can, we can see them under the bridge from just here. I'll take it. Uh, Herald of the Sun. Channel Divinity to engulf a visible enemy within six cells. Oh, they're not within six cells, are they? Oh, maybe they are. Uh, within six cells with radiant light causing 1d8 radiant plus two per cleric level, half constitution saving throw, and cause blinded condition for one minute. Negate if saving throw was successful. So, hopefully they fail this save, but knowing our luck, probably not. No. But they do take... Two radiant damage. Oh boy. Are they resistant? D8, 1, plus 4. Normal damage output, 5. Oh, I guess they saved, so they take 2. Okay. 
Delat. Unless they can climb the towers where the torches are, they're going to have to come up this way. And so we'll remain with our readied melee attack action. These guys are climbing. Okay, they can go up the bridge. And we failed whatever that was. Doom laughter. Cause all enemies in neighboring selves to suffer more damage. Inflicts doomed, vulnerable to poison and piercing damage. That's really not ideal. Unfortunately, we're not going to have any spells that are going to be able to benefit us against that. But we do now have an enemy that is within sight of us. Now, I'm going to go with the cantrip here because I'd like to save that last spell slot for emergencies. One radiant damage. Oh, it's so rough, but we have remained hidden. That's something. Down to the last one in the order. They're taking ranged attacks at Kite, who was vulnerable, and now, unfortunately, if we attack the Sorakath Saboteur here, we are not going to have sneak attack because they are um, they are not next to a conscious ally. Now, how did we roll for Faith's strength? Only a 12. Seven for charisma. Because the option here would be to try and shove them down rather than just stabbing them. It all feels like it's going so poorly so quickly. Or we could heal Kite and then Kite could try and shove them down. Oh, two ones. Slow clap for that. Uh, cunning action. Disengage. Move back. Alright, we are up. We only have half of our movement speed. But this does not promote an opportunity attack. And we rolled 3 plus 3 versus 2 plus 8. I swear, we should get blessed for that as well, shouldn't we? Alright, let's give ourselves a shield of faith. Some more emergency AC. Gothic is up. I don't love it, but God, they don't even get pushed back far enough to fall. 17 thunder damage though is massive. Can't reach that. Let's pull back. Although we are leaving Kite out there kind of exposed. Just a smidge exposed. They're regenerating. Pastel. We do not have any healing spells. We do not have any suitable spell scrolls. just going to have to be Sacred Flame. We'll go after the injured one. Try and reduce their numbers. It's going to do nothing. D 
to last. Why? Oh, we're at risk of being seen by this guy if we move because we're currently still an unseen attacker. And Delat has 24 HP but only 13 AC. So we could risk the check to try and get a sneak attack against this guy because they are engaged with Kite. Or at the very least, two attacks. good. Of course, you can only sneak attack once per turn. Okay, that's good. That's good. Three whole HP hardly seems worth it. Uh, but we can cast a cantrip. Forgot that bit. And their saves are just too much. This guy's throwing stuff. Kite is down again. Unfortunately, from here, we can range attack and sneak attack because Dalat is now up. That extra one damage. I'll come back to here and, if possible, hide. Kite rolls one failed death save. I wish I hadn't done the other spell that I already did. This is not even going to tell me how many stats we roll for a sleep spell. Because I wonder if this guy would fall asleep. Oh, this is just so terrible. So Kite is dead already. Pastel. Well, saving throws aren't going well, so let's go with hits instead. And we will back up into full cover. We do not have sneak attacks here, but we do still have two attacks. Gonna miss with a 14. Gonna hit with a 6. Now we can risk attacks of opportunity to try and get away, and on 13 AC it doesn't seem too wise. This guy down here is just mad. That guy's regenerating. Lush. Hey, eight radiant damage is massive. Kite is dead. Oh, we're not even there in the order. Natural one is really good. Sneak attack here. All right, that's two of them down. That leaves us with one, two, three by the looks of it. Even if they are all still on full health. Faith was not seen. 
So it's still hiding. Gothic. We don't really have anything particularly special to pull out now. Scroll of Magic Missile is fine, but it's not like it's going to kill anything right now. And sleep, I think, because our enemies have 200% max HP, isn't likely to be effective. So we just have to keep doing what we can do. Nat 1, really assisting that effort. They're shoving Delat and failing. Excellent news. I'm going to go with our attacking option rather than our saves. That's going just great. Delat with his two attacks. Unfortunately, no uncanny tasks to disengage with or anything, which could also be a problem. Six damage is six damage. And a crit for eight. This guy still just roaring. Beryl. And they always seem to save against Pastel, but not Beryl. I wonder what that's all about. That is a huge miss. Faith getting another sneak attack. And a crit to boot. 18 plus 4. Step to here. Cunning action. Hide. Gothic. There's a chance with a good hit we could have this one down as well. That is not a good hit. Rather than shoving, they go after a standard attack against the lat now. That's not going to do it. The lat is now up though, and with two good attacks, we could have this. going to need to be bigger than that, though. Oh, come on. Alright, if we get a chance with Gothic, now is the time we pull out something like a magic missile. Hopefully, we won't need to. They make their save. This guy's throwing stuff. What are you talking about? We still have Scrolls of Revivify. We have Scrolls of Revivify. This isn't how this work, is it? I'm so mad. Is it that we don't have two Scrolls of Revivify? Because... What's his face was down as well? I don't understand the rules of these engagements, and I hate the necessary ally thing. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. That guy had one HP left. If he didn't have one HP left, we would have moved backwards to the rest of the party. All right, why are we back here on the load? I'm so freaking confused. Quick save. Main menu. I don't understand this game. I thought I did.
Did I not turn on Iron Man mode in the first place? I mean, I can go back and watch my recording and find out if I did. So here is that video. I, I abused the stat rolling in order to have better characters ready. But we're going Cataclysm, Iron Man. Iron Man mode is on. And if you want to see the story and the introductions and stuff, you can go back to the start of this playlist. But because I'm going to keep this, I don't understand. Well, it seems that either it didn't delete my save or something else happened or it didn't count it because it was the ally that died. But I will give this another go tomorrow. If you understand what's happening, please explain it to me down in the comments. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit here being more and more flabbergasted and irritated at this fight I can't win. But thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.